We are so proud to announce that we are accredited by the ACCSC, which is the Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges. And if you compare our tuition to other traditional four-year programs, as well as some of the other film schools out there, you're going to get a pleasant surprise because we offer great value for uh, the education that we provide here. And another tremendous advantage is being an alum of MPI because, um, you know, we help students get careers and we have an entire uh, expert dedicated towards that placement. Her name is Katherine McDermott and she is our MPI career placement specialist. Catherine, can you tell us a little bit more about how MPI helps us grads after graduation? And then you can introduce our next guest, Kevin. Hello, everyone. Yeah, we, uh, we find out we, it's a small school, so I'm able to sit with all of our students and one-on-one uh, -on -one and get an idea of what they're looking for, what they want to do, what path they want to take. And uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of jobs available in Michigan, uh, small films, are always here. Big films come in periodically. There's lots of music videos. Uh, Michigan has a, a, a really um, great commercial industry and, um, and there's a lot of corporate jobs available here too. So uh, we help people find uh, you know, any gig that they're interested in. Uh, because we teach everything, uh, our grads are able to work in more than one category. Uh, even if they like camera, they're able to do grip, they're able to, you know, script supervise uh, because we teach everything, um, including assistant directing, uh, which is a segue right into our next guest, uh, Kevin Donovan. Kevin, are you there? I'm here, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's great to see you. It's great to hear all your voices. It's great to see you again, Kevin. I remember when you came into MPI. And you were determined. Now, tell us a little bit. I know you were working at a job that you hated. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and you couldn't wait to leave there. Um, mm -hmm. But tell us, uh, let's start at the beginning. How did you find MPI? I found MPI at a convention, actually. I'd uh, never actually even heard of MPI. I'd always been a little interested in being in the film industry, but not knowing anything about it, it seemed kind of like a pipe dream, like a very unobtainable goal. Uh, I was 29, geez. Um, <laughs> so, you know, going going back to school, going to college, uh, the price of it, even a two-year program, a four-year program, it just, it just didn't seem like something I'd be able to do. And I was at a convention and there was an MPI booth. And so I was like, wow, film school in Michigan is weird. And I just walked by and, and then the girl waved me in and she talked to me and is everything just fit? It was like she was like she was selling me the the price of it, the schedule. I mean, I had the ability to afford it and to follow through with the program, working full time, more than full time, being able to keep up with the studies, just being introduced to the fact that I could. I did a lot of research in other schools, and it was just. It was everything. Uh, other schools were five times the price. The programs were four times as long, and they weren't as hands-on or what I figured as authentic as MPI was. So that's the thing that yeah. drew me to it was that it's it is hands-on, which a few others have mentioned. You actually get to do the job, work with the equipment itself, be taught how to use it, and otherwise, it's taught by industry professionals, not just people who have worked in the industry, but everyone in some capacity still does. They're working with the equipment that people are using today. They're dealing with people that are working in the industry today. You're not getting dated information technically or, or socially. Now, Kevin, you're such a natural AD. Did you even <laughs> know what an AD was when you, uh, when you first came into MPI? What was your, did you know what path you wanted? Uh, no, not at all. I, I remember my first day at MPI. In that first class, you know, they say, hi, so-and-so, let's go around the room. What do you want to be? And people said, I want to be a director. I want to be a photographer. I want to be this. And when they got to me, I said, I have no idea what I want to be. I just want to be a part of the filmmaking process. So I had really no idea whatsoever. Never, you know, I, I liked uh, early on working with Jeremy 
a lot. I really enjoyed lighting. I liked grip work. I like just kind of painting with light, just creating emotion and tone. It was very cool. I don't think it was until the second semester that I even heard of what an assistant director was. And I remember what you said, Kathy. You said that the first assistant director is the most important and most difficult job on a film set. And that was it. That's, I knew that's what I wanted to be. I didn't know what the job was, what the skill set was, if I could even do it, but it was important and it was difficult. So I, from that day, I learned everything I could about what that job entailed and how I could be good at it. So it was you, Catherine. You, you made me. <laughs> I'm sure all you, of the instructors say that about all of their uh, subjects, but you know, <laughs> you just yeah, have yeah. to be in the first AD <laughs> class. So. Uh, that's great. Yeah. So are you using the, you know, what you learned at MPI? Do you use those skills? Do you, you, you are there in Atlanta working mm -hmm. consistently. Um, yeah. Do you use the skills? Do you find that, oh yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> I remember what they said. Absolutely, and especially early on, the, the biggest advantage that I had was I was just so much more knowledgeable in, in every aspect of, well, obviously I started as a PA and I was just, I knew so much more than everyone else. My, in my first hundred days, I just excelled over most anyone who was just there for the first time or had never really been on many shows or never really been to any school. I just, I felt I really felt empowered. People, I, a, lot, a lot of the work that I got early on was because people thought I was so much more experienced than I actually was. And all that credit goes to, to everyone at MPI and the program. And there's an abundance of work here. So just the fact that there is a lot of work makes it easy to stay employed. But my knowledge, my skill set, and networking is, is everything. It's, you get so so much credit from people maybe that you don't even know people have heard of you or heard good things about you that you've never met and that was another thing that you really taught me a lot was how to network not just in general but in this industry and it keeps me employed sometimes people call you and hire you for jobs and that that's when that's happening there's nothing better in the world when somebody now, just reaches out and says hey do you want to work on a movie sure of course <laughs> <laughs> now you made a big leap. You took a you when you finished school, <laughs> when you finished MPI, yeah. you quit your job and packed up and moved. And that was a big that was big. It 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 must have been scary. And so when you when you found yourself after graduation out in the real world, um what was that like? Um I mean, at the time you know, it was a no-brainer. It was, it was the most obvious thing to do. It's where I wanted to be. I, I was going to do it. It was, you know, young me knew it was going to be easy. You know, it was no problem. I, I, I put everything I could fit in my car. I drove it down here. I got an apartment. And, and I just, I, it was all about just getting my foot in the door. And actually, the thinking back on it, it was because of work I did in Michigan that I was able to work here in Atlanta. Uh, when I got here, I didn't, I didn't know anybody in the state of Georgia, not just in the industry, but at all. I just came here and I was just going to find me some work. And one of the very last things, one of the first things that I worked on, which I got through MPI as a current student, was America's Got Talent. I worked on that, uh, I believe, in November of the year that I moved. And the show travels, of course. So a few months later, it came through Atlanta. And I... I did a pretty good job. They, they liked me there. So I reached out to them and I said I was available to, to work the Atlanta show and they hired me. And it was through that, that I met a lot of people that are here. Uh, a lot of the other PAs, the, the assistant directors that were there. So I was able to start a dialogue with some of the industry professionals down here. And the most important thing was I actually met a person who I worked with in Michigan on that show who had also just moved here. And we exchanged information and about a month later, he was the one that reached out to me about a show that was looking for PAs and, and that's how I got my foot in the door. I got from that show, I got to the next one, to the next one, until I was able to, to actually be able to, to reach out, know where to look and, and find work when I didn't have it. So yeah. it was because of, because of what I did in Michigan that I was able to, to succeed here. Without that, I don't know 
without that one show, without that one job, I'm not really sure where I'd be right now, what I'd be working on, what I'd be working at all, where I'd be. So I was very fortunate. And a lot of that said had to do with, I got that job, not just because of going to MPI and knowing how to do the job, but through the school itself, they put me in connection with that show. That's great. So what would you, what was the, what single thing would you tell students now? What's the most important thing moving forward for them in their career? The, the networking is, yeah. is everything. It, it's, I mean, anything freelance is that way, but more than anything in this industry, when you work for as many days as that gig is going, sometimes it's days, weeks, months. I mean, you're, you're unemployed a lot of times of the year. I mean, technically, I mean, normally you, you have jobs stacked up and you have opportunities, but when you go back and look, I mean, I, I had um, 15 jobs last year. I worked wow. you know, full time through the whole year, but when I did my taxes, technically I worked on 15 different things. And those are, those are different. Uh, every show is, is basically like starting a brand new job. So it's funny. Always, always looking for work. Some people you meet on after two shows, it's a, it's a, it seems to be a small community when you get down to it. You walk with the same people mm -hmm. on different shows. That's how you network and they get you work because everybody's working on different shows. Is that what you find? Oh, a a absolutely. Um, then the more, the more you work, the more you, you cross paths with more and more of those people. I mean, there, there's a time when maybe you work on something where you don't know anyone, but after maybe a year, after a dozen shows or so, there's going to be somebody there that that you can that you can reach out to, uh, communicate with. Uh, uh, Matt earlier mentioned uh, he worked on Avengers and on Ozark. I mean, uh, those are both shows that I've worked on, and you know we we worked at different times. But there's a segue there. You know, maybe if you're uh, looking to contact someone or reach out to someone, that's that's really the best way to meet somebody if you're looking for work is you find somebody that they know that you know and that you make that connection. So, you know, that's, that's something that you can utilize in the future networking wise is you don't, you don't just have to cold call somebody or, or ambush them. You can, Hey, you know, Catherine, you know, Hey, can you, can you introduce me to this person? And yeah, of course. Hey, this is Kevin. So on. And then you kind of have that, uh, you kind of have that leg in. Good. All right, Kevin, I think our time is up, but uh, I appreciate you being here. Oh, it was, it's an absolute pleasure. Anything I can do, this is such a great program, and anybody that's a part of it has the ability to succeed with it. Great. Okay, so thanks, Kevin. Kevin. Um, nice next time. up, we're going to uh, take a look at some of the amazing gear that we have in use on our film sets here at MPI and around the world. To take a closer look at our most recent edition, here's Jeremy Schroeder. Hi, my name is Jeremy Schroeder. I'm the technology manager here at MPI. I'm also an instructor, and today we're gonna to take a look at one of our brand new red 6K Dragons, which we just got. This is the latest member to our lineup of characters in our camera department, so let's open the box and see what we got. Right. Okay. So right out of the box, we can see it doesn't really look too much like a cinema camera. It doesn't have a whole lot to it. it has a start stop button, but that's about it. it. Doesn't even have a place to put a battery. So in order to turn this box into a functioning cinema camera, we have to do a little work. So I'm going to go get some parts and we'll put it together, okay? All right, here we go. So all these parts came together to give us a functioning 6K cinema camera, but it still leaves us with the most important step of all, which is what do we do with it? And that's the part that's totally up to you. Thanks for watching. Good luck.